Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not? And do me a solid, click that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Throwaway Wedding Night, who says, My husband got jealous over the girl he led on for years at our wedding. I, 25 female, got married to my husband, 24 male, we we'll call him Jim, a week ago after dating for two and a half years. Jim has a friend called Misha, 22 female, who was invited to the wedding. He and Misha have known each other since high school and were close friends and Misha has a very obvious crush on Jim from what he and others know them have told me. Jim told me this after I met Misha for the first time and confessed that he leaned into her crush and led her on throughout their high school years and for a little while after, before we got together because he was struggling with his mental health and he really liked her attention. He seemed genuinely guilty about all of that because he thought Misha was a nice girl and a good friend and because he showed guilt, I didn't feel the need to bring it up or argue about it, despite thinking it was a shitty thing to do. Plus, Misha is a nice girl who has never overstepped boundaries and has been nothing but kind and friendly towards me, and I now consider her a friend too. Misha moved away to the city last year and has done really well for herself and has a long-term boyfriend who none of us have met yet. So when it came to sending wedding invites, I told her she's welcome to bring him as her plus one. The first red flag came when Jim was weirdly resistant to the idea of Misha bringing her boyfriend but he excused it on being concerned about the number of guests we invited and the matter was dropped. When the wedding day came, Misha showed up in this beautiful dress. Nothing inappropriate for a wedding and with her boyfriend on her arm, who I'll admit is a very handsome guy. Think a Kit Harrington type. She's also lost weight and has a haircut that suits her better. And I thought she looked great. We also found out throughout the night that her boyfriend is very successful and earns more than practically anyone else who attended. Throughout the reception, I noticed Jim glaring at Misha and her boyfriend the whole time and he was really cold and short towards her when she came over to congratulate us and give us a gift. It was also straight up kind of rude to her boyfriend when Misha introduced us to him. When his mum, who's always known and liked Misha, mentioned that she was glad Misha found a great guy and praised her boyfriend for being so nice, Jim snapped that at least she won't be desperate and hung up on me for the rest of her life. I thought was cruel and uncalled for, but I didn't challenge him because I didn't want to argue at my wedding, despite the fact that he frankly sounded bitter. The whole thing has left an awful taste in my mouth, and I can't help but think that Jim got jealous that Misha has found a guy who's honestly quite a catch, who she's very clearly in love with, and is now completely over Jim. And we do have like a little half update and full update in a moment. And I don't know where we're going to go with these updates, but I'm sure it's not going to be good from what I'm seeing right here. The fact that your own wedding day, you're staring at her, you're making comments about her, rude comments, and you're being rude to her new partner as well. I can't imagine how that would make OP feel like absolute shit on your wedding day as well. And I think it would certainly have me thinking, what else have I missed? Has he been checking out her socials and all stuff like that? And it sounded like he was really cruel before the way that he led her on. So, but again, I just feel so, so sorry for OP in this. Imagine on your wedding day realizing what's going on, that he's clearly jealous that Misha's found somewhere else and, and offended that, you know, she's moved on with her life. And you're having to watch your husband do this on your wedding day. It's insane. But Tattoo says, I think I would have to take a step back from hubby and see if there were any other red flags I've missed. He was jealous of this woman and her boyfriend on your wedding day. I cannot imagine how much this hurt you. I'm so sorry. Lychee says, if your husband couldn't enjoy his wedding day, I fear for your future. His only reason to snap is jealousy, but you should be his world. And 13 inches replies to that saying, yes, your husband had a weird reaction and probably is unhappy that someone he slighted and thought not good enough to date him is now doing better than him but please don't listen to random Redditors crying divorce and annulment because they don't know what they're talking about. Please let your husband know how it made you feel and show him where he is wrong. Fake Crazies laughs and says, it must have really made him feel small when he saw someone he rejected scored a guy with not only more money than him, but also who is not lacking in looks. Now he feels, how dare he pick her? She's not good enough and I was counting on her pining for me and see me and my wife happy and always sigh and say, how she wished in another life she was my wife. Well, that girl showed him. 
dude, you are nothing compared to what I can get. Good for her, and I'm sorry you married a toddler. And one more from South Operation who says, I'd be worried. It could be that his ego took a major hit, and we all know how men react when that happens. He probably liked the idea of her being hung up on him and maybe fantasized that she still would be. Instead, she showed up even hotter and with a great guy who outshined him. I'm sure that made him jealous, but whether it was over losing Misha in particular or losing an admirer in general who traded up for someone better than him, I'm not sure. Definitely warrants a serious conversation and you can decide which it is based on his answers. ETA, if it's the first option, I'd consider ending it. Even if it's the second option, I'd still be livid that he allowed his ego to overshadow the wedding day and would still consider leaving. I can't imagine an excuse he could come up with that would make you feel any better about the situation. He seems very immature and not ready for marriage. So the first little half update comes up and says, after getting some PMs from people, I decided to go through his phone while he was napping after work and needless to say, this marriage is over. I'll post a real update when I have sorted everything out. Then OP goes on to the real update. Hey everyone, I'm posting this here because I said in my last post that I would update when I was able to. Pretty much the day after my original post, I got some PMs from people suggesting that I go through my husband, Jim's phone, to see if he and Misha were truly just friends before this and that nothing romantic happened between them that would explain his reaction at the wedding. He always takes a 45 minute nap after work and so I used that as my opportunity to swipe his phone from where it was charging on his desk so I could look through it. I've seen him put in his passcode a ton of times, so that wasn't an issue. I didn't find anything in his text with her, but I know that Jim goes on Instagram a lot, so I checked there too. The immediate red flag was that he used an app lock that required a passcode to access Instagram, but the dumbass used the same passcode that he used to unlock his phone, so I got into that right away. It's his birth year, go figure. And what do you know? I go to his messages with Misha and find messages from him the morning after our wedding, telling her how beautiful she looked that night, how much he'd missed her and how he felt that her boyfriend being there spoiled his opportunity to catch up with her and that he was desperate to meet up with her. Misha never replied to these messages and he sent some more to her later that day. I won't get into what he said because they were very personal insults that were frankly just gross. But just think about the kind of stuff you would read on that nice guy subreddit. Misha left him on red and when I clicked on her account, it appears that she's blocked him. I scrolled through their messages quite far back and I believe nothing romantic has happened between them. I wish that was all, but looking into his other conversations on Instagram, I found that he's been messaging other girls on there. He seemed like aspiring Instagram model types from our area. Most of these conversations were just him shooting his shot and getting left on red, but others had evolved into flirting and two of them resulted in sexting. And the most embarrassing part of all, the nudes he was sending to these women weren't even of him. I know what his body looks like and he doesn't have chiseled abs and isn't that well endowed. I think he must have found a man's profile on some adult website and used those pictures just cropping the face out. These two conversations happened in the past six months. I ended up texting his mum and his brother from my phone asking them to come pick him up from the apartment and then I went to wake him up. I told him that I knew about the girls he was messaging on Instagram and he needed to pack his bag and get the hell out before I started throwing his stuff out onto the street and causing a scene. He started crying and begging me not to kick him out and swore that they were just messages and that he would never actually cheat on me, but I don't believe him for a second. Then he had the nerve to tell me that he didn't want me to tell anyone else about what he'd done, but I had left the room and started ignoring him by that point. He left with his mum and brother and is staying there from what I know. I've blocked him on everything for the time being until I'm ready to tell him that I'm seeking annulment. Thankfully, from where I'm from, you can get one almost no questions asked as long as you haven't been married for longer than 30 days. And I've already looked into the process. I haven't really left my apartment at all this week and I've been calling in sick to work because I don't feel like I can face people. I'm just so embarrassed that I've wasted over two years on this man and that I married him in the first place. I don't feel like I can even talk to people about this. So posting here has helped and I'd like to thank you all for your kind words, advice and support. I might reach out to Misha when the dust has settled, but I think I'll need to build up some courage for that. I always feel particularly sad after these stories for the OPs when they said, and it's just quoting a line that she said, that I'm just so embarrassed that I've wasted two years on this man. It's like, well, you don't have anything to be embarrassed about. You've done nothing wrong. You know, you were the one that's had to go through this. 
you don't have nothing to be embarrassed about and i find it incredibly sad for them that they get these feelings of you know hiding themselves away not being able to talk to people when they should be able to and as i always say i know it's not that easy because you know i'm not in their position i'm just reading the story so it's very easy for me to comment when when you're on the outside of this all but now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below let's move on to another story and our next story comes from use veterinarian 978 who says i regret leaving my wife and my girlfriend i don't know if i have the right to ask her to take me back my wife and i separated a year and a half ago before that we were together for 15 years 15 happy years we have two daughters together 14 and 12. the last two years of our marriage i thought that we have achieved all that we could achieve nothing changed and we knew each other by heart the pandemic years were hard on me mentally but being stuck at home 24 7. i didn't know that at the time i thought i was stagnating and out of love with my wife and that being home made me realize that instead of the truth that i was depressed because of being at home all the time albeit with her when i went back to the office after two years I thought my change of humor to the positive was because I wasn't with her. Instead of the fact that I could actually get out again. I met Anna, female 32. She was one of the new people that we hired. Anna is free and happy, social and high spirited. She took the office by storm. She was the opposite of my shy and calm wife. I remember when I first met my wife. I was the one who asked her out. And first two years into our relationship, she confessed to me that she had liked me for at least a year before I asked her out. With Anna, she was honest and verbal about how she had a crush on me. Like an open book, she proposed to me. I told her that I was married and she said that we only lived once and that she wanted to let me know how she felt no matter if I reciprocated or not. I felt strongly for her. I confessed to my wife that I was out of love with her. She asked me if there was someone else and I said yes. That was enough for her to not try to dissuade me. I know that she was hurt and suffering in secret and I never tried to console her because I didn't want her to know that I knew how much she was hurting. Her pride has always been her dearest possession. I moved out a week later to Anna. I thought that I was going to be over the moon now but something that was missing even when I felt happy. I thought it was me missing my children and my home. I used to be with my daughters every day and now I only see them half the time. I thought it was my daughters crying and not speaking to me that hurt me. I thought it was a disappointment in their eyes that disturbed my sleep at night. My wife was my rock, even in separation. She made sure that the girls didn't refuse to see me. She kept my image whole and always spoke to them about how I loved them and how good a father I was. I knew she was hurting and I could see her missing me, but she never once lost her dignity. It was around Christmas time when it hit me how much I really lost. Anna had surprised me with a trip to a warm destination because I was feeling down and that this would be the first time I wouldn't celebrate with my daughters who chose their mother. Anna always understood that my blueness was because I missed my girls all the time and she tried everything to cheer me up. The night before we took our trip, I dropped by my wife to leave my daughter's presence. My wife opened the door and just looked so serene. I lost my balance on an ice patch and she just said oops and ran towards me to help with the gifts. I caught a whiff of her smell and that's when it all hit me. I did miss my children and my home and my stability but most of all I just missed my wife. I missed her warmth, her voice, her calmness, her wit and most of all her smell when I buried my face in her hair and neck on Saturdays when we would sleep in. I knew that I never really stopped loving her. She wasn't the reason I went through a dark period. She was the only light that pushed me forward. I've always missed her. I've tried to explain it away because I have this new brilliant girlfriend who is so different who is teaching me how to be excited again. Every time my wife is the first thing I thought of when I woke up in the morning and looked at the person next to me. And every time Anna kissed me I closed my eyes to try to imagine my wife's smell. I pushed these thoughts away because I thought of how miserable my life had been in these pandemic years. My wife was putting up the Christmas tree and I asked her if I could stay for a beer and she said yes. I started crying in our kitchen and, and when she asked I told her that I was missing the girls and how strange it was not to celebrate with them. She comforted me and told me that everything will be okay and to have a nice trip. Change is never easy even if we wanted it. Now another Christmas is approaching. Anna has booked a new adventure for Christmas and I didn't even protest. For the last year picking the children up or dropping them off has been what I look forward to just to see my wife's face. 
have noticed how she'd become happier and more in terms with the changes and I envy her. I wish I could just tell her how I feel, but I don't want to disturb her healing when she's come so far. I love her like I never loved her before, but I don't deserve a moment of her life after what I did. And we do have an update to this post which we'll cover in a moment, but the clumsy pirate says some people have everything and yet they insist on burning down everything all over again. I have no sympathy for you because after 15 years, you still didn't have the foresight to realize why you were feeling down. You didn't even try to fix it with wife through counseling or talking. All you could see was you have upgraded to a better, more outgoing girlfriend. You have already destroyed your marriage and have whatever remnant of a relationship with your ex and your kids. Who you have pretty much lost, by the way. They're old enough to see why daddy left mummy and will soon be mature enough to realize what it took your wife to be this strong. But your girlfriend, the cool girl who took the office by storm and didn't mind sharing how she felt for a married man. At least you have her by your side, buying your holidays, just the two of you away from her stepkids. You can't seem to appreciate even that. Just be happy with the life you have. It ain't so bad. Please don't even contemplate bothering your wife. Soon she'll move on and have her own boyfriend spending Christmas with your kids. Impossible Peach 985 says, honestly, don't tell her. She deserves to be happy and not with someone who flip-flops on their feelings for her and cheats when they get depressed. You're an adult. Go to therapy and live with the consequences of your actions. Your solution to your unhappiness is to cheat, which is wrong and shows just how toxic of an individual you are. Your ex seems like a beautiful, lovely person and I'm sure she will find someone better than you. MJ MJ says and quotes her pride was always her biggest possession then goes on to say what are you talking about you sound narcissistic you literally told your wife you weren't in love with her anymore and that you already had someone else and you want her to cry for you in front of you your wife deserves better you did her a favor in disguise and lonely Ronin says the dildo of consequences rarely arrives looped you don't deserve her walk away Try to patch up the relationship with your kids and leave her alone. Maximum Necessary says your wife looks happier because she lost dead emotional baggage. If you really want your ex-wife to be happy, leave her alone, aside from being a good father to your children. Reevaluate your current relationship. Your girlfriend deserves someone who is equally in the relationship, not someone wallowing in self-pity and pining for an ex. Grass is always green somewhere else until you get there. Stop looking for other people to make you happy. It's selfish. Get some therapy and learn to love yourself. And one more from Rages who says, you're doing the same thing now to your girlfriend you did to your wife. Infidelity is abuse. You seem unable to be alone and unable to be happy who you're with. You are traumatizing people along the way with your selfish choices. As you blithely go along your merry way choosing yourself every time. Parents don't get to be selfish at the cost of all others. You should separate from your girlfriend and work on yourself and what makes you unhappy and lack loyalty in every relationship you are in. You frankly left your wife for something shiny and new and now that you see what you had was amazing, you want to have your cake and eat it too. Look at the damage you have caused your children. It's time to get help for yourself so that you can work to repair the damage with your girls and start setting a good example and frankly ending things with a woman who helped you knowingly heap that pain upon those who should have been most cherished in your life is one way you could try to show with your actions that you no longer want to be the person who would hurt them so terribly. I don't think you should get back with your wife. You are not a safe partner. There are a lot of steps you could take to make amends and prove you know the hurt you caused and the trauma you caused. Why not take those steps instead of staying with this other toxic woman who helped you destroy your family? It's shameful on both your parts. You should end it and work on yourself. It's honestly the least you can do like the absolute bare minimum. And taking trips on Christmas instead of seeing your kids? Jesus fucking Christ. I know your kids don't want to stay with you, but I bet if you got rid of the side piece, you could at least visit them. You chose a woman who participated in breaking up a family of your own kids, and you continue to do so. Get it together. And I gotta say myself going into this, I didn't know if it was the right advice or not, but... It was just like, don't do it because I think it's just going to hurt her again. Like you said, she's come on further now. It sounds like she's finally at the place she's starting to move on with her life. You coming back into it, it's only going to bring up past trauma and maybe bring her back down again when she could finally move on. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What would you advise in this situation to OP? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. 
Now, as always, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support, and time is just absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for giving it to the channel, giving it to me as well. Thank you, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care. Much love.